Hey peeps, welcome back. We are talking The Real Housewives of New Jersey, season 14, episode four. Hey, before we get into the video, please do me the honors of subscribing to my channel, hitting the notification bell so you can always be notified when I post new content, hitting the thumbs up because that does wonders for my channel, and share. Thanks. All right, peeps, sorry for the late post. I was on vacation. Uh, for the Memorial Day holiday, me and my little sister went on a road trip to Tennessee. This is our second or third road trip to Tennessee. We love it there. I don't know. I told her, I said, one day I might end up moving to Tennessee. I like it there so much. Anyway, let's talk about the Real Housewives of New Jersey. Okay, so I don't know, you guys. I'm a bit bored. Um, This season is really boring me the way that they're all disjointed and fragmented and this Teresa takedown season is falling down terribly. The plan is not working. Things are just not gelling. You know, allegedly I hear that they have canceled the New Jersey reunion, that there will be no reunion. And I said to myself, I said, the last time a housewives show did not have a reunion was for New York. And we see what happened there. They got rid of every last one of them and started over. Personally, I would much prefer for them to get rid of Marge and Melissa and the Fudas and then take what they have now and, you know, add something extra. As a matter of fact, they can take Danielle right along with them. Anyway, you guys get down in the comments and let me know what you think. The show starts out and you see Joe and Marge on a little date night. They, you know, take the motorcycle over to a burger place. That burger looked real good, didn't it? Um, and she was talking a little bit about Jen Fessler being nice to Teresa. And I said, here we go again. You continue to say that you don't want to deal with Teresa. You don't want to talk about Teresa. You don't want to see Teresa. You can't stand Louie. But you haven't even been here sitting down with your husband for five minutes and you're already talking about Teresa and Louie and being offended that Jen Fessler has her own mind and has decided that she's going to do whatever the hell it is that she wants to do in her life. Jen Fessler is a grown woman who has lived. She dated Tony Soprano for goodness sakes. That woman has the, or James Gandolfini, I think is his real name. She has every right to do whatever the hell it is that she wants to do when she wants to do it. Nobody should be ran by you, Marge. Now, also out here in these um, blog streets, Jackie is saying that before the season started filming, Marge tried to convince Ben Fessler and Jackie to quit the show if Louie came back. So they should walk away from the show if Louie came back, but Marge would stay on the show. And Jackie and Jen said, absolutely not. What kind of shit is that? Okay, so you're just gonna stay on here and continue to get your paycheck, but they're supposed to quit? No, ma'am, no, ma'am, I cannot. She was telling her husband that she was upset that Jackie came over and put in her two cents. Jackie was a housewife. She is still friends in this group. She has every right to put in her two cents. And her getting upset that Jackie would not give her a advanced copy of her book just makes zero sense to me. First of all, Jackie only gave Melissa an advanced copy because Melissa was going to be talking to her on her podcast and be asking her questions about the book. If you are going to be on someone's podcast, you would want them to read your book ahead of time so that they know what to ask so that you have some point of reference when you're speaking about things that are in the book. Then Marge makes this comment that Melissa doesn't even read books. Marge is exhausting. She is a disgusting human being and she shows that every season. Marge is bringing the Real Housewives of Jersey down. Then we see Rachel Fuda want to meet up with Jen Fessler because she feels that she has been done wrong, that Jen is not being a loyal friend to her by having a conversation or talking to Teresa. Rachel is crying and just acting like a toddler. And Jen feels the same way. She says, you know, you are 32 years old. Why are you crying? Why are you acting like this? We are adults. This woman should be able to be friends with whoever she wants to be friends with. It's absolutely possible for 
Jen Fessler to be friends with Teresa and still be able to be friends with Rachel Fuda. There is no need to have all of this. This is my friend group. This is my territory. Why the tug of war? This is crazy. She says, I was talking to Teresa and trying to advocate for you and John. And she says, well, it was a victory for you, but not me and John. John and I were very let down. Who cares about you and John being let down? This is absolutely ridiculous. They end up, you know, making it up, hugging it out. And, you know, Jen Fessler says that she really does love Rachel. She loves their friendship. She just doesn't like to be told what to do. And I understand that. Um, then we have Jennifer Aiden, who's having a first birthday party for her dog, Biscuit. And at first I said, is this just her way of having a get together? But it seems that Olivia was really, you know, excited about having this birthday party for Biscuit. She had these little doggy treats that had the word bitch on it. And Olivia was saying the word bitch just a little too much for me. I think that Olivia is a cute little girl. I really do. But I still don't think that... I would be okay with her saying bitch over and over again like that. You're a little girl. Let's not. Anyway, Jen Fessler was excited to find out that Rachel was not going to this party because she did not want to have to go through the tears and the water work and the temper tantrum if she was to have a conversation with Teresa. However, I did love the puppy fashion show. I love a little puppy, especially little tiny puppies. I love tiny puppies. I would have loved to have seen Marge's little dog there with a little cute outfit, but you know, Marge acts a fool all the time and she would have just made the party unbearable for the rest of the ladies. The comment that Teresa made, who would Joe bring Marge or their real dog? Uh, nobody loved it except for baby Jackie. Jackie got a little chuckle out of it, but everybody else was completely shocked. And I said, Teresa, what happened to you rising above? Don't make those kind of comments because you know good and damn well if Marge would have said, who's Louie bringing, Teresa or their real dog? Teresa would have flipped the table. Girl, stop it. Now, one thing that I have to call out, I love me some Jennifer Aiden. But girl, you have not learned. You are doing the same thing that you did previous seasons. You brought this Lena girl here to put Danielle on blast. If you really wanted Danielle to be on blast, you didn't have to invite Lena. You didn't. You could have just sat there with the girls and said, girl, did you guys see how Danielle acted towards Lena at this charity event that we were helping her with Lena opened up her clothes shop just so that Danielle could get in there and get her hair and makeup done and then Danielle threw the girl out the party and out the VIP she could have did that on her own you did not have to bring Lena to do that the same way that situation went down with Melissa and Danielle you didn't have to tell Danielle so that Danielle could carry this ball along when things fall apart and you and Danielle have to go at it it's your own fault. You should have just told the story on your own or kept it to yourself, not bring this lady into it. However, I do think that Lena has every right to be pissed off. And I would have just took it to Danielle straight if I was Lena. I wouldn't be behind her back talking shit. Everything that I had to say to Danielle would have been said to Danielle in her face. She can wave her hands around all she wants to because she could also get these hands if you move your hands too close to my face. Because sometimes, you know, we could get violent and we shouldn't, you know, this shouldn't come to a violent situation. But listen, if I get out of my house, come and open up my business to do your hair and makeup. And then I also buy a ticket to come to your event and I'm hanging out in the VIP with some of your friends who are also my friends. And then you throw me out of there. You damn right. My shop will never be open to you. Even during regular business hours, we are done. I just think that that was shady, but I would love to hear Danielle's side of the story. Now, Jennifer also making the announcement at the table. Why isn't Rachel here? You know good and damn well why Rachel is not here. But I also appreciate that Jen Fessler said off the rip, she's not here because of Teresa. Dolores was a little concerned and uh, confused. She said, you know, she felt like she was in the twilight zone because Jackie and Teresa are getting along so great. And, you know, it was last year that Jackie wanted Teresa dead. Now, all of a sudden, they are, you know, talking, laughing and joking. Now, Jackie says in a recent interview that her and her fallout between Marge started before season 14 even started filming. 
She said that her and Teresa had decided to move forward in their friendship at Jen Fessler's birthday party, and she has no idea why their scene did not air. But since then, her and Teresa have spent birthdays together. They call each other several times a week. They do all kinds of things together as real friends, and they are real friends on and off the camera. She said she never had a fight with Melissa or any bad words with Melissa, and she has you know, no idea why Melissa is against her now, other than the fact that she's friends with Teresa. And she says that in the previews, when we see the big blow up, the big fight at the finale, she says that that is all Danielle's fault. So she blames Danielle for all of those issues. It was also interesting at the puppy party, Gia was there and Gia had all kinds of comments. And I said, well, all right, Gia. Okay, first of all, she looked really beautiful in her confessional. And she had some valid points. She says that she doesn't know why the girls keep doing this territorial thing with their friendships. You don't have to be that way. And she also says, you know, if John Fuda truly does want to talk to Louie, they should have the conversation, but it should just be the two of them. She said, when we get to the sporting event, if they want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, they should go into the locker room and have that conversation with just the two of them. And I agree. If they could both sit down and have a conversation with just the two of them, there will be less screaming, less showboating, less fighting all together because you won't have whiny Joe, baby Joe, which is Margaret's husband and you know, Frank in there causing more problems. Now I'm gonna tell you right up the front, watching the scene with Antonia going off to school and seeing how Joe was so emotional. I watched it, but I watched it through tears because I remember taking my son to his dorm the first time and his dorm room looked just like Antonia's. It's the same size, everything, small closets, all of that. And I thought that they made her and her friend JC's dorm room look gorgeous. They, it, they did a great job. But when Joe started talking about her being his little girl, I actually paused and I had a long cry because you guys know I recently lost my dad and I was just thinking about my dad and all the things, all the things. My dad was such a cool dude. Man, he was so funny. He made everybody laugh all the time, but his jokes were never at anyone's expense and he never met a stranger and he was always there for me. Even when I was in the wrong, he was there to fix it and explain to me how I can make things better. And he always said to me, leave things better than when you started or leave things better than when you arrived. Um, he's just an amazing dude. And uh, I miss that guy. I miss my dad. Anyway, let's move on before I break down and forget <laughs> what I was talking about but Joe and Melissa crying and having such love for Antonia that was just a beautiful scene and I know that's how it is for parents across the world dropping their babies off to college you're just leaving them in the world you know what I mean it's rough so I was really I was touched and and it was an emotional morning let me just say that but we move on. They're getting ready for the baseball party. And Dan Dolores is explaining to Polly about American baseball. And I laughed. I said, girl, is this some kind of filler conversation? Because y'all don't have shit else going on. Because this man has been living in America for at least 15 or 20 years. You mean he doesn't know the difference between American baseball and what they do over there in Ireland? I, I don't buy it. That's a bunch of bull. Anyway. I didn't really love it when Joe said that Joe, Melissa's Joe, Joe Gorga said that Bill was his wife's puppet. That's a bunch of bullshit. And you know what else I don't like either? I do not like that they keep acting as if at BravoCon, Joe Gorga, which I had totally forgot until one of the peeps got down in the comments and refreshed my memory. And I said, why, well, thank you so much, because I forgot. But the show is acting as if everybody forgot. So I must have been the only one to forgot. But at BravoCon, Joe Gorga called 
Jennifer Aiden a dirty bitch. You know, if I was Bill, I wouldn't speak to Joe Gorga at all. You got one time to call my wife a bitch and I'm a light your ass up for sure. I don't play them games. I have, ne I mean, you have never seen Bill Aiden get up in Melissa's face and call her a bitch or anything. You have not seen Bill Aiden call Melissa anything but Melissa or Joe's wife. I thought that was some straight up bullshit. I really did. I, I wasn't here for it. And I don't know why the show won't bring it up. Bring it up. Let's talk about it. And I think one of the reasons they don't bring it up is because this show, especially Andy Cohen, absolutely loves Joe Gorga. And they try to make him to be something that he is not. He is a jackass, pure and simple. Now Marge gets a pure attitude as soon as Jackie shows up. And she also makes the comment about Jackie, this one is what she called her, this one. This one will pop you. I'm just saying, I don't condone violence, but Marge brings it out of me. Anyway, that woman, oh, I could never be in a friend group that she was a part of without popping her at least twice. Anyway, this one got invited to the dog party. And Danielle says, who invited you to Jennifer's dog party? Uh, it was Jennifer's dog party at Jennifer's house. So she got an invite. But then I thought it was kind of crazy that Jackie wants to bring up that Danielle didn't invite her to her event. And she was the only one left out and Marge didn't have her back. And I said, listen, Jackie, I'm trying to be team Jackie this season. I really am, which I have never been team Jackie, but I'm, I'm trying. Um, you should not have been invited. Okay you your behavior towards this woman was ridiculous I don't understand why you don't realize why you were not invited I also don't understand why you keep bringing it up what you should have done is pulled Danielle off to the side and said I am really sorry for how we started off is there any way that we can you know start over I'm sorry about what happened I know that you had this celebration of life for Nate I'm sorry that I wasn't invited but I understand why let's start over something don't just come off as if you had a right to be upset you were violated you know you didn't get a chance to come girl get the hell on now, honey, what I did love is Margaret trying to tell her that she didn't call her for the anniversary of Jan's death and all of this other stuff, which is another thing. Some friends of the family or somebody has been all over social media saying that Marge is saying with Joe when she was saying that she was, you know, with the family at the hospital and she was at the funeral. Some friends of the family they're alleging that Marge is lying that she was not allowed up in the hospital because the family didn't want her there and that she was also not allowed to attend the funeral now I don't know how much of that is true but if she really is lying about this that's disgusting it really is don't use Jan for your storyline so she was upset that Jackie didn't call her on the anniversary of Jan's death and Jackie said she didn't know that it was the anniversary of Jan's death. She didn't remember. And I'm going to tell you the truth. When it becomes the one year anniversary for my dad's death, I would prefer if people didn't call me. You know, I think that that day is already going to be hard for me. I don't want a whole bunch of calls because it will just make it even worse. Because I know the people calling me, they are also affected by the loss of my dad. And I don't want their pain and my pain. And you know what I mean? I would prefer that people didn't call to remind me of the day because I don't, I don't need a reminder. Um, I just, you know, each person grieves in their own way. So I don't know, maybe Marge really did need a call, but I don't blame Jackie for not remembering. And I appreciate Jackie making that comment that she has really made Marge feel like she's better than her. She said she's making me feel like I'm a member of her entourage. Marge is not the center of, you know, of my life. And I don't need attention from Marge. She said writing her book has changed who she is. And I say, amen for her and Jen Fessler, both of them being able to stand up and say, Marge, you are not in charge of us. I don't know what made you think that you were the colonel or the admiral of the group and that we all have to fall in line and salute to what you want us to do. That is not how life works. 
And you cannot tell me that production was not behind Teresa and Joe's families showing up at the same time and being in that locker room at the same time and none of them speaking except for Teresa hugging her nephew. I thought that was really nice that at least the kids can still hug their aunt. I mean, this is crazy to me. I know that Teresa and Joe's parents would be terribly sad to see the state of this relationship. Now, when Jen Fessler, Teresa, and Jen Aiden were over there asking Jackie what was going on with her and Marge, um, Marge got all upset talking about she doesn't like this. They can't be my friends. They're over there talking about me. Girl, stop it. Stop it. Then she gets all upset and runs over there to Jen Fessler talking about, I'm not happy about this. You're standing around talking to Teresa and Jennifer. And I said, Wh whose responsibility is your happiness? And not Jen Fessler. Not Jen Fessler. You know, Bill and Joe Gorga, they hug it out. But there still was no mention of you called my wife a bitch, which I don't get it. But what I did appreciate is Melissa went over to Jennifer and she said, you know, pretty much. And I'm paraphrasing. I'm sick of the bullshit. Let's just sit down and talk. She said, if you want to come to my house, you can. Joe will not be there. Jennifer said, yes, I would feel more comfortable if Joe was not there. Of course she would. The man ran up in her face and called her a bitch. Of course she would. So she said, well, we can meet out somewhere in public. They absolutely should. I think that Melissa owes Jen an apology, but I also think that Jen owes Melissa an apology. And if Jen really wants to be friends with Melissa, she should be friends with Melissa and vice versa. Both of them should be able to be friends minus Teresa and Teresa should be able to be friends with Jennifer minus Melissa. I don't know why all of these grown married mothers cannot figure this out. You can all still be in the same friend group without being friends with certain women and still keep it cute, keep it classy. I'm sick of these girls. I really am. You guys get down in the comments and let me know what you think. And until next time, bye.